yet there was one more, and that was the voice of God himself. The word transfigured is a very interesting word. The word is metamorpho, as we think of metamorphos, to change. The thing that comes to our mind most frequently is that of a butterfly. Changing from a caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly. And it's often used as a symbol of the resurrection. The prefix meta means to change and morph means form. In the case of transfiguration of Jesus, it means to match the outside with the reality of the inside. Remember in, in Hebrews we're told that Jesus' divine nature was veiled in human form, and the transfiguration glimpse of that glory that was veiled. Change the outward so that that matches the inward reality of who Jesus really is. The voice of God attests the truth of Jesus' sonship, and this was the second time that he spoke, and Peter was there for both of these occasions. And this brilliance of light that appeared, a blaze with glory. Aaron Rose wrote, in the right light at the right time, everything is extraordinary. The disciples fell to the ground in fear. They were afraid of what this light and voice meant in their lives. John Wesley writes in his notes, the indwelling deity darted out its rays through the veil of the flesh, and that with such transcendent splendor that he no longer bore the form of a servant. His face shone with divine majesty, like the sun in its strength, and all his body was irritated by it, that his clothes could not conceal the glory but became white and glittering as the very light. He was transformed, transfigured, ablaze in glory. One of my favorite authors is C.S. Lewis. I've read, I think, most of his books. And I know that uh, one of the things that was, uh, my son enjoyed was his uh, series for youth. I'm sure some of you have read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That's one of uh, his stories where the children enter the strange land of Narnia through a wardrobe. <coughs> Only a short journey away, through some coats, is a whole new world which other people are not aware of. It is a world in which there are people and creatures and a fight between good and evil. It is a world in which the evil witch is only defeated by the sacrificial laying down of the life of the strong lion, Aslan. It is he who saves the life of the child, Edmund, by giving his own life in the boy's place. In so doing, he acts in accordance with the rules laid down in the deep magic of the emperor. This wonderful story has much that resonates with our understanding of the gospel. It also helps us to think beyond what we can see and recognize the other world which is just a short distance away. Sometimes we think of heaven as being up there or out there or somewhere. But heaven is just a step through the back of the world. It's very close to all of us. In the story of the Transfiguration, Jesus just shows, shows us how close that world is. In a moment, the disciples can see Moses and Elijah, two men supposedly long dead from their historic past. I have often been asked about where our loved ones are. The Transfiguration is a window into the world where those who have gone before abide in God's love. There is between us only a metaphorical walk through a wardrobe. That's all that separates us. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul tells us, 
He says, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. We too will be ablaze with glory. Just a step through the wardrobe. In Hebrews we read, God will roll the heavens up like a robe. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you remain, and your years will never end. 